What's up guys? Welcome back to some more science talk. And today we're going to talk about the Oort Cloud. I know, I should say, it's a little weird name, but that's how it is. That's how it's described. So that is what we're going to be talking and learning about today. Pretend that I'm the teacher and you're the student. That's who I'm talking to you. You. So, however, we're going to talk about the Oort Cloud, like I said, so... First off, what is the Oort Cloud? So, the Oort Cloud is an extended shell of icy products that exist in the outer reaches of the solar system. Now, think about this. Pretend that this is the planet and this is surrounding it. This could be a shell for the planet. So, you guys, it's like a shell to protect the planets. But, to keep your belt, if you want to check that out, check out my channel. So, however, what extends outside the keep your belt is the ore cloud. So, you get it, so... So, okay, so it is named after an astronomer named... Jan Oort. Now, Jan Oort is one of the most famous astronomers that is from the Netherlands. Now, think about this. Jan Oort was not German. He is Dutch. But if you think about Dutch, you think about Germany and Netherlands. That's what you should be thinking about. So that's really when the Oort Cloud start became in popular like that. So but I'm not sure when the Oort Cloud came out, but let's see. Hmm. It was probably around 1930s or so. So, yeah, maybe about 1930s, 1940s, I don't know. So Oh no, it was named after an astronomer named John Watt. So he first theorized. He made up this theory that it still exists. Now, if you guys don't know what the Oort cloud is, you don't all know what its shape is. It's mostly spherical. Like it's like into a circle in 3D. So that's what I mean. And it is the origin of most in the, um, my bad, of the long period comets that have been observed. So oh, God, me. the cloud of particles is theorized to be re the remains of the disk of material that was formed by the sun. And the planets, including Mars, Jupiter, even us, Earth. All that stuff. Even Neptune, Uranus, Mercury. And even Venus. Think about that. So, pretty common sense. That's what I mean. Oh, and when I go to physics, use common sense and I'll find out what we're going to be doing. So, Starting physics, I'll do a whole lot of common sense. Alright? Because you have to use common sense for almost everything you do in... You know. So, alright. So, this cloud of particles is also... Oh, wait a minute. Never mind. Never mind. So, astronomers now referred to those primordial objects as a protoplanetary disk. So, if it's proto-planetary, then, well, what that mean is a large planetary embryo that originated as within a disk and has undergone internal melding to produce an, a different interior than the exterior. So, that is what, what was I, proto-planetary is, so. The most likely theory that is that the material now in the Oort Cloud probably been formed closer to the younger sun 
in the earliest approaches of solar system formation, so. Really interesting. I mean, that would be pretty cool. If the sun was young, then a little bit came in. Uh, no joke. So, as the planets grew by, and in particularly as Jupiter. Remember, Jupiter was my first episode of Science Talk? I know. I really want to know about all this stuff. So, start Season 1 of Space, Season 2 Galaxies, and Season 3 some weirder stuff. Pretty weird stuff. So, that's what it means. But, as the planets grew, and in particularly Jupiter, is like colorized and migrated to its present position, which is huge. Biggest planet in the whole wide world. So, its gravitational influence is thought to be scattered many icy objects, but it has many icy objects, is what I'm meaning. So, out of their present position in the Oort Cloud, oh, give me a second. So, just look out the window. So, you don't need to worry about that. So, the Oort Cloud is very distant from the Sun, and it can be disrupted by the nearly passage of a star, nebula, or any action in the disk of the Milky Way. If you guys want to check out Milky Way, check out my channel once again. So, those actions can be knocked by. Well, the cometary nuclei out of their orbits and it can send them on a headed rush toward the sun. Pretty cool. So, next out of our three things we need to know about, the last one is what we need to not worry about. This is just some extra information. So, the location, alright, so the Oort Cloud location. So, where is it located? So, the inner units of the Oort Cloud began at approximately 2,000 astronomical units from the Sun. Pretty cool, huh? So, the cloud itself stretches out almost a quarter of the way of, to the nearest star. From, from Xia Sanitara. If you guys what you want to know what that type of star is, it's a red dwarf, about 4.24 light years from the sun. Pretty far, huh? So, it's also inside the G cloud in the constellation of Centaurus, which made the existence of Centaur. But even though that happened in Greek mythology, Centaurs don't really exist anymore. So, I know they can be friendly sometimes, and they can be dangerous. Who knows? If you guys want to know, secondly, the G cloud, it's an interstellar cloud located next to the local interstellar cloud. So that's what a G cloud is, if you guys want to know. So, however, it is spherical shaped and consists of an outer cloud and a torus inner cloud. If you guys want to know what the torus is, this may be a little yummy, but... It is donut shaped. If you love donuts, don't eat it. It's bad for you. Well, you might need to feel anything. Clouds? You can't eat clouds. So, big deal. No big deal. So, however, the facts about the Oort Cloud, or some things that I found out on the internet, is the objects inside the cloud are also referred to trans-Neptunian objects. If you want me to refer about trans-Neptunian objects on the Kipia belt, check out my channel once again. So this name also applies to the objects inside the Kipia belt. Pretty cool. I'm still not so. Also, some astronomers theorized about that the sun may have been captured or cloud cometary material from the outer disks of other stars that were forming in the same nebula as our star. Pretty cool. So, 
The Oort cloud is a reserve of cometary nuclei that contain ices dated back to the origin of the solar system. So that's like the Big Bang. That's when the solar system happened. So no one knows for sure how many objects exist in the cloud. But most estimates put it around 2 trillion objects. 2 trillion objects. That is a lot of objects. The planetoid Seta is thought to be a member of the inner Oort cloud. If you guys don't know what Senda is, it is a large minor planet. However, it is named after the gods of the sea. The gods of the sea, this was, um, is it Greek mythology or what? Oh, this is supposed to be Canadian mythology or inlet mythology. What else to think about? So, that means that inlet people have think about the Senda as their go goddess of the sea. And of course, Goddess means girls, and gods means boys, so think about that, if you're wondering. Senda is not a man, that's a woman, so think about that. However, it was discovered in 2003, so that's like about a year before, a year after I was born, so. However, astronomers think that long period comets those with orbital periods longer than 200 years, or 1815, when that star came out, however, have their origins in the Oort cloud. Pretty cool. So, however, we're going to be talking about the solar eclipse next, and then I hope we get to the comment of the asteroid, but not before star physics. Now, if you're wondering about physics, you want to get a little introduction onto physics? That's like the study of matter. So, we're going to be talking about some several people. Well, this is... Well, we're going to have three seasons of physics. Or the book. So, this is what we're going to be doing. And not one of the examples is astronomy, because we just covered astronomy. One could be, um, let's see, um, let's see, let me look at this, biophysics, maybe, chemical physics, and dynamics, probably, but, we will see about this stuff, I am not sure what types of physics we're going to be learning about, and we will find out what we're going to be learning about. Alright, so that's it guys. Uh, make sure you subscribe, like, and comment if you guys can. Alright. Alright, thanks. Thanks for supporting my show and see you guys next time. Take care everyone.